Hey, I hope you are doing well. Today I wanted to give you a piece of advice pertaining particularly to scammers. And unfortunately, they are a part of the business. I wish that weren't the case, but I wanted to give you a quick tip today on a common method that scammers are doing to try and get stuff for either a discounted price or for free. And I wanted to talk to you about how I handle those situations in a way that prevents you from getting uh, taken advantage of. So let me just jump right in real quick. This is a common method in the last three years that I've been reselling online. I have seen uh, probably eight to 10 different eBay buyers try and scam me out of an item that they purchased from me. And it goes like this. They order something from your store, you ship it to them, and then immediately after they receive it, they will say something very irrational and over the top. Something like, hey, I received the item today and it smells awful. And this actually happened to me. I sold a pair of shorts. It was the first return that I had that was like this, that someone was trying to scam me. And they said that the shorts were, they smelled so bad that it stunk up their whole apartment in 10 minutes and it smelled like a dead animal and they threw it away. And so, when I first got this message, I was a little alarmed because I had never had anything like this happen. I mean, I'd had your average return that, you know, go off without a hitch, but to get something so erratic and over the top, I didn't know what to do. And at first, I started to think, how is that possible? You know, I didn't have any pets in the home. I'm not a smoker. And I know my inventory pretty well. At that time, it wasn't a lot of stuff. So I knew that, you know, if something smelled really bad, I would know what what article of clothing that was. And typically I don't buy things that smell bad uh, for one and that bad, obviously, no way. I was kind of alarmed at first. I didn't really know what to do to handle this situation. And the guy, you know, said he threw away the shorts and I'm thinking, that seems a little strange. Why would you throw away a pair of shorts that you claim smell like a dead animal? This idea came to mind and, and what I did was I just asked him to simply return the shorts. Now, I know that he said he threw them away, but you know, I, I kind of just said, hey, if you want to return the shorts, you can, and I'll give you a refund, a full refund once I've received them. And he continued to claim that he threw them away, which I didn't believe was the case. You wouldn't throw something away that bad. You would obviously send them back for a refund. It's like if I was on Amazon and purchased something and it came in the mail, not what I expected, I would immediately just send it back and get a refund. I wouldn't throw it away. His reasoning was a little off. I claimed that I'd give him a full refund upon uh, receiving the item back and he continued to say they smelled awful. You know, I washed them like three times. I couldn't get the smell out. I had to throw them away. Obviously, I knew that this guy might be scamming me. I continued to hold my position, send them back and I'll give you your money back. And what he was asking for was a partial refund or a full refund. A lot of times if the story sounds a little over the top like that, they're just trying to get under your skin quickly so that you just respond by doing something like giving a full refund. And in that case, I wasn't gonna do it because I didn't believe the story that he was telling me. Now, there have been times when I've sold an item and I missed a, a, maybe a hole or a small stain, you know, nothing too large. But the buyer has always been really accommodating and someone that I can work with. Even in their response to me, it was like, hey, I received this item with a stain, what can you do? And typically, most people, when they have a, you know, a possible return, something like that, they're usually easy to work with. And so whenever you get someone that seems a little over the top, they're really just trying to push you to a quick action, quick response right away. The secret is if they're claiming the item was not as described and it sounds a little fishy, I don't mean just your typical um, item not described, but it sounds way over the top, always have them send the item back. And this is how you can tell right away whether they're telling the truth or not. Because if they are telling the truth, then they would be glad to send it back for a full refund. That would be kind of industry standard. And if they're not telling the truth, then obviously they want the item and they want to get a partial or a full refund. Unfortunately, there are sellers out there, and this is just a philosophy I guess they take, but that they don't want to deal with people like this, so they just quickly refund, you know, give the partial refund or the full. And it enforces to that type of person that they can scam and get away with it. And so 
Uh, I t tend to stick to the principle in the matter of I'm not going to get taken advantage of. And honestly, if they continue to say, I don't want to send the item back, please give me a partial refund. I, I just don't. I just tell them my policy is send it back and I'll give a full refund. So I just wanted to give you that kind of encouragement today because there are a lot of people out there that are getting scammed. And unfortunately, if you just look over a few Facebook groups, you'll notice this issue comes up quite a bit where people are scamming for partial or full refunds. Don't let it get you down. Just keep moving forward. Don't worry about that person, but just send that quick response to them and it will all work out. Occasionally that person will threaten to leave a negative feedback. This has happened to me where I didn't give the partial refund they were looking for. And I did get a negative feedback. And a lot of times if they threatened you in a message, keep the message. After they leave the negative feedback, call eBay and most times they'll remove it due to uh, the scammer like using aggressive language and trying to bribe you into a favorable outcome for them. So make sure to keep those messages. Really, if you're getting scammed in this particular way, do not give them the partial refund. The only time I would do that is if I think they're telling the truth. And I have done that maybe uh, three or four times where I've given a partial refund. I've We've agreed upon the amount and they've been more than willing to work with me. So if it sounds fishy, there's a good chance that it may be fishy. I wanna give just a, a quick few tips as to how to deal with scammers in this situation and maybe in general because it is happening quite a bit. I would say one, you know, don't assume that everyone's trying to scam you, you know, when you get a situation like that, because there are times when I've thought this person is definitely scamming me and, and to kind of unpack that situation a little further, I realized I don't think they are actually, I think they're just trying to um, get the situation taken care of. So there have been times when I first off assumed that the person was scamming me and they weren't. So don't assume that everyone's trying to scam you. And then I would also say this, like always let the first exchange back to that person be professional and kind and just a matter of fact. You want to make sure if they're not scamming you that you don't um, upset them or frustrate them anymore in a situation that could be legit. And so make sure your tone is very professional. I always say I'm sorry. I understand that's a frustrating thing. I'm sorry for the inconvenience. I always just apologize even if I suspect it may not be my fault or I didn't do anything wrong in the case of a scammer or a potential scammer. So it doesn't hurt to always just reach out with a, an apology, um, have an open mind, be understanding, try and gain more information. Usually the situation will sort itself out. You'll be able to tell at some point down the road whether they're being truthful or not. And also if, if you do have to get an eBay rep involved in getting a possible negative feedback removed, it does help to show that your response has been professional timely, kind, um, and willing to work with them. If they see that, hey, you will give them a refund if they would just send it back, a lot of times that will help you than just responding back in the same tone that they uh, gave you initially. And I will say, you know, most scammers, if, you know, the tactic is to push you to a point where you're uncomfortable. So if you don't respond to them in the way that they are wanting, a lot of times they will respond with an even more aggressive tone. Don't let that intimidate you. At first, you know, when I had not had a lot of experience with people like this, it would get under my skin and I would let it kind of eat away at me. And now I'm just, I'm used to it after having had this happen to me a few times that I just respond with my canned response every time and I move forward. And I almost just laugh at it now because it's kind of comical that people are trying to take advantage of the system. Let that be a tip in how you deal with scammers when they're wanting partial or full refunds. If you have, you know, 100% feedback and say you just started and you really don't want to um, jeopardize that good ranking, I would say, you know, at first I was the same way. I have 99.9% .9 now. If I get one or two, it doesn't bother me as much as before because most people, you know, aren't searching by feedback. They're really... Um, just making sure that you have overall outstanding feedback. And if you're in the 99% and up, I would say you're fine. So don't let one potential negative feedback steer you into giving in to someone, especially if it may be able to get removed later on down the road. And I would say this too. I did have a negative feedback where the eBay rep would not remove it. And he was clearly trying to scam me into money. And I asked to speak to a manager. The manager said the same thing as the eBay rep that I had initially talked to. They were not gonna remove it. He was basically stating that, 
you know, everyone's entitled to leave a feedback based on how satisfied they are, which I thought was, you know, it makes sense. But in this case, in this case, it kind of was interesting. And I, I talked to this guy for probably 30 to 45 minutes. And even though he kind of saw that it was a scam, he wasn't going to remove it. And I was getting really frustrated. A piece of advice I got in a Facebook group was, if you don't get what you're looking for the first time, call back the next day, you'll get a different eBay rep. And maybe they'll, you know, without having any context to the situation, they'll see your side and remove the feedback. Lo and behold, that's what I did. I called back the next day. This very friendly lady was like, okay, I'll review the case. Within two minutes, she got back on the phone and she was like, this is clearly a violation of eBay policies. I'm going to remove the feedback. And it was just like that within five minutes. So something that I got worked up over an hour the day before, the next day was just a quick solution that they took care of. That feedback was removed and I was happy. So I wanted to share that with you today because it's happening quite a bit. I want to give you encouragement that it happens to all of us. It's not personal. That's just a practical way that that you can handle it if it does happen to you in that particular way. So I hope you found that helpful today. If you did, would you please give this video a thumbs up? If you'd like more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel as I will continue to give you content and information that I've learned along the way to help you get to where I am without having to go through, hopefully, all of the obstacles and the bumps. Thanks a lot for watching. I really do appreciate it. If you had a situation in which you got scammed and would like to tell me, I'd love to hear it as well and how you dealt with it. So thanks a lot and have a good day.